I'm leaning towards a one Jay-Z. What's up guys, so today we're gonna to be changing out the Clutch Master Cylinder on the Supra, and I got this ASIN Clutch Master Cylinder. ASIN is the original manufacturer for a lot of the parts for this car, and this is CMT059, got it from Rock Auto. It was really affordable, and the reason I'm replacing it is because there were some leaks into the carpet. If you saw uh, episode three of my build, uh, the carpet on the driver's side just got completely destroyed, so we're gonna go ahead and replace this. Shouldn't take too long uh, other than just the fact that I'm filming it, but um, I'll show you guys what I need to do to replace it, what tools I need, and the steps that I take. And then I'll put the carpet back in at the end. Here's a list of parts you'll need for this repair. First thing, just a suggestion, have some kind of source of light. So when you're working underneath the dash, you can see because it's really dark down there. Second is a Phillips head screwdriver to take out the little uh, screws that hold the undercover. A line wrench to remove the uh, clutch fluid line, 12 millimeter socket, preferably a deep socket with your ratchet of choice. And there's a little bolt that holds the um, master cylinder to the pedal and it goes this way and then there's a little pin that holds it in place. So not sure if you're going to need needle nose pliers. I also have a pick so I'll be able to pull out that little uh, pin. And then of course you need your clutch master cylinder. This one is CMT059 from Isen, and some DOT3 brake fluid. Another tool I might recommend is a syringe or a siphon to remove all the fluid out of the reservoir. It makes it a whole lot easier. Basically it'll just place inside uh, the reservoir and you'll suck it out and put it somewhere else. That will make it easier, but I don't have one of those, so I'm actually going to place a rag underneath the clutch master cylinder and then I'm going to place a used container underneath it, like old Tupperware or something, and then when I open up the clutch fluid line, it'll leak into there. So I'll go ahead and open up my clutch fluid line. So the clutch fluid wasn't really in that bad of shape. Now there's two nuts that are holding in the clutch master cylinder. On some cars, the nuts are on the outside so you can unscrew it from uh, here. But actually on this vehicle, the nuts are gonna be on the inside. So it's gonna be a little bit more challenging to just kind of reach them, but it shouldn't be too hard to actually do. Uh, the biggest thing is we remove the cover. That gives us a lot more access to see stuff and to use our tools in that small space. We're in the car now and this is the driver's side. Uh, the reason I took the carpet out was because of the leak to clean that up and also just refresh the carpet. And you can see the rust around here. So that's one sign that there was a leak for quite a while um, and also the fact that the carpet was soaked. Now we can look for the leak by looking at either the brake master cylinder or the clutch master cylinder. And the brake master cylinder is up here and you would check around the seals for any signs of leak. You can also check the metal around it for signs of rusting. And there was not any on that. Now if you look at the clutch master cylinder, which is a little bit harder to see, but back there, there's one of the nuts that hold it in. And there's where it sticks through the firewall. And you can see signs of leak from the seals as well as around it, there's a lot of rust uh, around the metal uh, on the firewall. So that definitely is the cause of our leak. Also, you can see that it's a lot easier to see everything when that cover off. We'll start off by removing the nuts. There's one to the right, which you can see uh, in plain sight there. And that one's really easy to get to. The other one to the left is going to be about 
half an inch to an inch higher, um, but you can't see it. There's this wall here, and you kind of just have to feel behind there. Um, the way I did it is I actually have this um, extension around the sensor and kind of to the left of this spring here and you just kind of have to feel for it when it goes in. You'll have to just pretty much reach up in here and feel for the nut. But I got it on there now and I'm just gonna go ahead and loosen that up. All right, so I actually had to break it loose off camera because it was kind of tight and I had to use both hands. Um, but now that I have it uh, broken loose, just go ahead and remove it the rest of the way. You just wanna make sure when you're removing it, you're feeling back there to make sure the socket is all the way on there because you don't want to strip that nut because it's really um, hard to get to in the first place. Reach in there. There you go. Well, let's take off the other side now. You can see the pedal right here. There's this bolt right here that holds it in. Let's see if I can get that a little bit brighter. There's a bolt right here that kind of screws that way. There's a pin to the left here. I'm gonna go ahead and pull that out. And then that bolt should slide out. All right, so once that slides out, looks like our clutch master cylinder is free. Push it out and you should be able to take it off on the other side. So here we got our clutch master cylinder. You can see now that um, it's kind of pushed out a little bit. We pushed it a little bit from inside. Need to work it out. Just carefully. And there you go. Another step you can't forget, it's probably hot out, summer, you're probably sweating your ass off. Take a break, drink some water, and watch a commercial. Toyota Sanzen GT New Supra Fun to drive Toyota So now that you have the old clutch master cylinder out, this is gonna be your last chance to compare it to the new one and just make sure you have the right part. Uh, when you get it though, you should be able to tell before taking out the old one that you have the wrong part but um, now that you have it off, you can really compare it closely, make sure everything lines up correctly, and if you don't have the right part, obviously go ahead and order the right part. Also, while you have it out, you would wanna adjust the length of the shaft here. It'd be easier to do it with um, the vehicle out. And you don't want to do it too tight because you may need to adjust it later. So 
There you go, my adjustments have been made. Now ready to put it on the car. I'm not gonna put my line in yet. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten it down from the inside first. So the first thing I wanna do is go ahead and put this uh, bolt in through that holds the pedal. And I'm gonna go ahead and put the hotter pin in through the left side. All right, next I'm gonna go ahead and put the screws in. I'll put in this one here first, right over here. both left and right I'm just gonna bring you guys up here just to make sure just want to make sure it's even you don't really especially if you don't really have a uh, helper or anybody helping you you just want to check that both sides are even and it's pressed up against the firewall evenly so I think we're good there All right, so next step, I just want to remove the little cap that's covering the um, port here, and then just go ahead and start hand tightening the um, line. So put it in there. So next step would be just to go ahead and uh, remove the top start putting some brake fluid in here and then start bleeding it. Now one thing I did forget is this brake fluid that I have is super old. It's been opened for more than a year. You definitely don't want to use old brake fluid. It absorbs water. Um, try to use it within the first year. So I'm going to go ahead and get a new bottle of fluid right now. I'm so glad I got that fluid when I could. It's going out real bad. Can you help me bleed the clutch? Right now? Yeah. 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 All right, so we're under the car and you kind of have to Stay really far back here. Um, there's the slave cylinder and the end of the leader valve. I actually stuck a uh, vacuum hose and I'm gonna go ahead and snake that down here into an empty bottle to catch all the fluid. That way when I'm opening up the bleeder valve, uh, brake fluid's not spraying everywhere down. Up, down, up, 
down. Is it coming up on its own? No. Not yet? Okay. Oh. So it's coming back on its own? A little. Okay, good. Are you up? Yeah. Down? Yeah. Ooh, it's getting a little milky too. Down or up? Yeah. Up. Can you pump it? Uh, see if it comes to do it. Just pump it once and let let it up. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. One more uh, time. Up. Down. And then once you start feeling the pedal uh, come up on its own while the line is closed, you'll know that. The air is mostly out of the system. Just do it a couple more times and close it up, top it off, and you're all good to go. So I'm just gonna clean up and hopefully the rain lets up today. Probably not though, but I wanna test drive it before I put the carpet back in. And then once I confirm there's no leaks, I'm gonna put that carpet back in and finally have an interior, finally have a car that I can drive around. I have been slacking with this video. I finished up the clutch master cylinder like two days ago. And right now I have the interior kind of ready to have the carpet put back in. I drove the car yesterday to work and the shocks are kind of bad. Uh, you can feel the back end is kind of really harsh. So that needs to be fixed. That's good that I drove it so I can find that out. But other than that, the car drove well. There's no leaks from the clutch. Overall, yeah, the car is pretty much ready to put some interior in. I should have my Speedo cable in a couple days. So I'm really stoked about that to finally count my mileage again. Pretty stoked about having this car roadworthy and getting it inspected and back on the road. So let's put the carpet back in and get this going. I am so sick of this heavy ass seat. Holy shit.
All right, that's pretty much it for me. I am tired. It is really late. It's probably like four in the morning. I gotta stop doing this. I gotta stop staying up late. But I got it done. You notice the passenger side isn't in yet. The seat is inside the house somewhere. I'm too tired to worry about that. All I need is this driver's seat to get to work tomorrow if I wanna take this car. As I post more videos, hopefully I'm gonna start getting more and more done on each video instead of making these long videos just for barely doing anything because I did the clutch master cylinder, I put the interior back. I feel like that's not really good enough content for you guys, so I'm gonna try to up the content as we go along. I am getting close to finding swap parts for the car, so that's gonna be coming up real soon. And again, next video is probably gonna be the spark plugs on the FRS. If you guys wanna follow my journey, go ahead.